Hi, fishy internet peoples. I thought I would go over how my tank is set up that I've got my Farloella in because a few people have been asking me about breeding them and kind of go over some of what I've learned as far as breeding them. Okay, so basics first. This is a 40 gallon breeder, pretty heavily planted. There is a wave maker on the left hand side there. I don't know if you can see it or not. But it's putting out a pretty good wave. Got a sp big sponge filter in each corner. And that is all the filtration that's in here. The tank is stocked with some Kubatai Rasboras. Or the green neon Rasboras. And the and I'm not sure on the pronunciation. Chipotle. The Glow Light Danios. There's some of them in there. And in here somewhere, which I only see occasionally, there is some dwarf anchor cats too. And then of course the Farloellas. I started out with three Farloellas, so I've got three adult Farloellas in here. Two of them have paired up. The other one, I'm not sure if it's another female or male. I'll have to try to figure that out one of these days soon here. And I've got either two or three half-grown babies in here. A couple times I've seen three at once, so I think there might be three. But, you know, the tank is so heavily planted that who the hell knows what's in here. <laughs> and there's a hodgepodge of miscellaneous shrimp that I've culled out of other tanks and dropped in here. And they're actually doing pretty good. There's a female there, if you can see her. And there's one of the young um, Farloellas, one of the younger fry, sitting on that leaf there. I'm not sure if you can spot it or not, but it's on the leaf. And here's another one on the glass. And then there's one of the adults. I believe that's the female. And over here is hanging down off the tube is the male the daddy of them anyway yeah so that's what's in the tank I keep the tank like say there's a wave maker on, on one side so it's got a pretty good current going on because they like that and I keep it at about 74 degrees now right now the tank is at 6.5 pH which I lowered it on purpose. Coming out of my tap, my water's at 7.8, and I was having massive die off when the eggs were hatching. They would like get halfway out and then die. And I tried, I'm not going to bore you with everything I tried, but I finally decided it had to be the water parameters. So I started, they lay eggs about once a month. So I started slowly adding in RO water and adding in tannins to lower the pH and lower the hardness. Because I don't have test kits, but I know that my water is really, really hard. So I've been adding, like, basically diluting it down with RO water for the last month. And this last batch hatched pretty good. So I think that was the key. But anyway, yeah, so this is how my tank is set up. Like I say, it's pretty heavily planted. Shrimp and the Farloellas and the Rasboras and the Danios. And lots of current, fairly low temperature. It doesn't get that hot here in the summertime because we're at a really high altitude. So, and even on days when it did get above 80 over the summer it still cools off to like 50 at night so the tank never got super super warm I don't think they would like it if it did but I'm not positive like I say I'm still learning this how to breed them and stuff oh there's this black shrimp and I've got a cat running around here if you see a tail every once in a while but anyway yeah so this is how the tank is set up and, yeah, what else should I, 
oh, when I feed them, I feed, their main diet is French cut green beans. With the three adults, I was dumping in about half a can a night. And now that there's a few fry in there, I probably dump in about three quarters of a can a night. And it's always all gone in the morning. Of course, I've got ram's horn snails in here who also eat the green beans. So, But mainly it's the Farloellas that eat it. And then every once in a while I give them some Rapashi. I've given them like steamed carrots and stuff too, which they seem to enjoy. But the green beans are the, the staple food that I give them. Okay, so that's about it. I'm going to show you the fry are two weeks old today. The new fry. Not these guys are a couple months old. They're growing, growing. But anyway, then I've got the breeder box on the side that cycles the water through from the tank, from the main tank, and through through the breeder box and comes out on the other side. I think it's also key in raising them that you don't want to, um, which I figured out by trial and error, you don't want to take ta dechlorinated tap water, clean water, and drop the eggs in that. They do not do well. They need old age tank water. And, um, and like I said, I had to soften the water and lower the pH to get a good success rate. And I've got a piece of wood in the breeder box that's getting algae all over it, which they seem to be enjoying eating, although I am dropping like a bean in there at night, but they're mostly eating the algae. And let's take a look at them. So this is the messy breeder box, lots of algae. But there's the two week old fry. They're starting to get color and stuff, which is pretty cool. And they're all doing pretty good. I've got 13 of them, which I'm pretty happy with. Because from what I could see, it looked like there was probably about 15 eggs, so I only lost a couple of them. And that was actually from my own mistake that I made, so. So I think that all of them probably hatched. And there's one right there on the side. But anyway, yeah, they're doing good. They're coloring up. And they seem to be kind of thriving. When they get a little bit bigger, I will be moving them into a five-gallon tank that I've got some juvenile Farlowella frying right now. I think there's five of them in it. And they're about big enough to put in the main tank with the adults till I sell them. So I'll probably move them in here and put those little fry in the five gallon to grow them out more. Thirteen of them should still do okay in the five gallon because they don't really move around that much and need a lot of room. But when I do it, when I do move them, I'll try to slowly get that tank water about the same as what they're in now so that they continue to do well. But yeah, I think the lowering the hardness was probably the biggest thing that I needed to do. And lowering the pH didn't hurt anything either. So, because like I say, the water out of my tap is at 7.8 and really hard. So, I think the key was in changing that. So yeah, there's a ram's horn. But that's about it. If you have any questions, like I say, I'm just kind of learning this myself, but this last batch was a pretty good success. So, so if you have any questions about any other thing that I've done, if you want to try to raise some, just comment below, let me know, and I will talk to you all later. Have a good weekend. So a little add-on to this, into this, that I should go over a little bit how I take care of these little guys. So, I know I went over the breeder box before. It has a motor, which I have down there, that hooks up and draws water up from the main tank and dribbles into the breeder box. 
and on the other side it circulates through and it has a little gate on the other side and, the and a drain that the water goes down and excuse the fact it's covered with algae. I'm actually purposely leaving algae in this brooder box because right now that's what these babies are eating. I am tossing a bean in there to try to get them used to eating beans too because when the algae has gone they will be switched over entirely to the green beans. But yeah, so we got the breeder box. It's got a piece of wood in it, which you can't hardly see because it's got a little bit of java moss and a whole lot of moss co or algae covering the wood. And I could say mainly they're eating the algae right now. But what I do is once a day. And you'll have to excuse all my plugins and stuff back there because this is my tank rack. And it's running. The plugins there are running one, two, three, four, four tanks. So anyway, so down here I'm going to unplug the motor. I do this every night when I get home from work. I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not. There, got the motor unplugged. And I take this handy dandy turkey baster and I siphon out the detritus and stuff from the bottom. They're poos. Careful not to get any babies in there accidentally. And I check every siphon. I double check it and make sure that there's no babies in there. And I have a house plant down there that gets watered every day. You gotta kind of suck it up. And I always get a little bit of the brown algae out with it, but that's okay. And I should speed this up because it's going to be boring, but I suck it out to where the box is about half full. And then I let the um, turn the motor back on and let it fill back up from the tank. So that kind of gets rid of the stuff off the bottom that the current is not strong enough to pull out of there. And keeps it clean, or somewhat clean, like say there is a lot of algae in here, but that's what they're eating right now, so. So mostly I just want to get their poos out of there, not the algae. And there's one over here on the side i got to be careful of. He's right there in the corner. And lots of reflections. Lots of brown algae on this log. But like I say, they're eating it. So, oh, there's one right there too. So i got to be careful of him. But yeah, it's just kind of a slow process. Because you don't want to accidentally get one of the babies. And like say there's 13 I thought I had nine but then I found a few more that were in the main tank that had gotten gotten um, dumped in there accidentally so got them out and got them in the breeder box because the thing with these guys is that you don't want to um, until they get bigger they can't go without food at all so I don't want them in the main tank because there really isn't a lot of algae in the main tank because the Adults kind of take care of all the algae off the glass and everything. So they got to be in the breeder box so they can have food in front of them all the time. Anyway, I'm not going to make you guys suffer through me doing a whole half a box, but that's mostly what I do. That's about a third of the box tonight, so we'll call it good for tonight, and I'll do them again in the morning. And then I just plug it back in, and it starts... Pumping the water back in from the main tank, which I did a water change on the main tank yesterday, so it's not, it's good water. Um, I've been adding, like I said, I've been diluting the water down in the main tank for about the last month. Every time I do my weekly water change, I have been adding probably about one-third RL water to the tap water. 
and I've been slowly, and actually I've been increasing it to where it's about half and half now, which was enough to bring the, bring it down to where the eggs actually started hatching, so that was good. But anyway, yeah, so that's how I take care of the little box with the babies. I see there's a, you can see there's a one bean in there in the monk's algae. And they've been, I've seen them munching on it a little bit, so when the algae's gone, we'll switch over to beans, and when they get a little bit bigger, they'll go into a five-gallon tank, and I'll pull the babies that are in the five-gallon tank and put them in here with the adults to finish growing up. And I think that's about it now. So I just wanted to, to show you how I take care of them. So thanks for watching. Bye.